Hey everybody, Bethany here, your singer educator, and today we're going to make a needle book. And this is a needle book, a little pocket for your extra needles, and a place to store your needles in between uses. Fun fact, you should change your needle every six to eight hours of sewing. So let's get started with making this adorable needle book, and we're gonna dive right in. So the first thing I wanna do is make this quilt as you go block that's gonna be the outside of our book. Because if we're gonna make something for us to use in our sewing room, it needs to be cute. So we're gonna do some quilting as you go. This is a very easy method with some fusible fleece. And I'm gonna lay out my one and a half inch strips in the order that I want them in. And then I kind of move them over and stack them up so that I make sure that I put them in the order that I want. You can have some fun with this. This is a great way to use up scrap fabric. The first thing you wanna do is press down the first strip to the fusible or the bumpy side of your fusible fleece. Once it's pressed down, take your next strip flip it over right sides together with your first strip and then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down to secure these two together. So of course I'm going to use my quarter inch piecing foot and I'm going to attach it to my Singer sewing machine which I am using the Patchwork Plus sewing machine today with the extension table attached because it gives me more sewing space to complete this project. So as you can see I have stitched all the way across I'm gonna trim my threads, and then I'm gonna take this piece that I just attached, that peach color, and I'm gonna fold it open so it's right sides up. And then I'm gonna to go to my iron and press this down to secure it to the fusible fleece. See how secure it is? All right, so now it's time to get my next strip of fabric, right sides together, and do the same thing by sewing a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Very easy, super fun, and this method is super quick to do and is an impressive look to this project. So continue to piece all of your strips all the way across your fusible fleece until it's completely full edge to edge. All right, here it is completely stitched all the way across. I did trim it down to the right size. And the next step is adding the optional pocket. Now, if you have not yet downloaded the full written tutorial with all the measurements, it is linked in the description below, so be sure you grab that. Here is the pocket piece. I am gonna fold it wrong sides together, and I am going to do a top stitch across this. This is optional, but again, it just gives it a really nice finished look. And I'm gonna do that same quarter inch stitch, and I'm just gonna leave the quarter inch piecing foot on and stitch all the way across the top of the pocket piece. All right, so next I wanna take my quilted panel and find the center on the left short side. So when you're looking at it, I wanna find the center on the left-hand side. I'm gonna use a pin to mark it because this is gonna tell me where I wanna put my elastic. This is gonna be the loop for my button closure. So I'm gonna take my four inch piece of elastic and fold it over and clip it to where that pin is. I like to use clips because it just is a little bit easier, but you could use that pin to hold it in place. And then next, we're going to lay this flat and place the pocket that we just top stitched across there. We're gonna place the pocket on top and line up the edges. The pocket may be a little longer and that's okay, but you just wanna make sure that the raw bottom edge of the pocket is aligned with the bottom raw edge of our quilted panel. Now this piece right here is what's gonna be my inside lining and I wanna put that on top of these other two pieces right sides together kind of sandwiching those all together so I can turn it when I'm done. So we're gonna clip all the way around. I like to use clips because at this point we've got fusible fleece, quilted blocks, lots of pieces, and it's a little thick. Um, so use your clips if you have them, but pins will work just fine and secure it all the way around. Now we're gonna sew all the way around, but leave about a two and a half to three inch opening to be able to turn it right side out. Okay, now when you are stitching around. I'm doing that same quarter inch. I'm just going to leave this foot on this whole project. And um, I do want to call out that you want to make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end of that opening so that your stitches don't come out. And then you do want to use the pivot method um, when you're sewing around this to get really nice crisp corners, meaning you want to leave your needle in the down position, lift your foot, pivot your fabric around, put your foot back down and keep sewing. As you can see, it just makes a really nice clean corner for when you turn it right side out. So I'm gonna finish going all the way around, 
Right here is where I am going to go over where my elastic is. So the loop is going to be on the inside and we're just going to catch the tails and it'll all turn the right way when we're done. Now when you are done sewing around, you're going to want to clip your corners so they're not so bulky and then turn it right side out. And this does take some finagling and some patience, but just work it through. Um, there is a tool called a corner turner um, or point turner, and it does come in very handy to get these corners pointed out and it seems nice and crisp. This is that tool I was talking about. And you're gonna put it in there and just really work those corners out so they're nice and square. And you'll see that my corners come out really nice because I took the time to make sure that I did a nice clean corner stitch all the way around. So as you can see here, my pocket is actually on the wrong side because I just didn't get turned the right way. So if that happens, just flip it to the other side, use your point turner again, and get those corners nice and straight. And you see my elastic loop came out really nice. Now, once you get your corners all turned out, you are gonna wanna go to your iron and give it a really good press. Help it all lay flat. And then you're gonna fold in those top little opening areas uh, fold those pieces in put a little clip or pin in it and then as we top stitch all the way around this entire square before we add our pages um, it'll catch that opening and close it up so yeah now we're going to top stitch all the way around all right so here it is all pressed top stitch looking so nice and we're ready to add our felt pages felt is a great option for the center pages of a needle book because it helps secure those needles in place. So we're gonna take those two pages, line them up, fold them in half, and find the center of the top and the bottom and mark them with a pen, okay? And then when we do this for the book, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna fold the book in half and mark the top and bottom center with a pen. This way we can make sure our pages are aligned um, with the inside of our book. And you want to make sure that the pages kind of sit in the center in the middle around that top stitching that we did so i've got my two pins aligned now i am going to be stitching down that so i am going to use clips to secure those pages in place so they don't shift because the pins are not actually holding the pages to the book and then i can remove those pins so i don't sew over them um, with my machine because that's not safe but before I remove that last pin um, on the felt pages, because I'm going to just leave it there to make sure I'm following a nice line, I am going to use the other end of my point turner. It's got a little creaser, and I can make a simple little crease down the center to have another line to follow to make sure I'm stitching a straight line. This really helps for a visual for me for sewing a straight line to have that crease. And again, I'm going to use that same foot and um, do a straight stitch down the center. Be sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end to secure your, place, uh, your pages in place. All right, our book is almost finished and look how beautiful it has come together. This is such a quick project. All right, so we've got our pages on the inside, our pockets, and so now we have a pocket at the front and the back since we did the stitch down the middle for the pages, and it's so cute. But what we need to do last is add a button for that loop closure so it stays shut. Now, to figure out where your button needs to go, you're gonna take your loop, fold it over, and kind of mark it with a pin so you know where that button needs to be attached. When you mark it with a pin, kind of stick it through, and you'll see on the other side where it is right there on the pocket but we don't want to stitch through the pocket so make sure that you are pulling the pocket down when you're sewing your button on now you have a lot of options when choosing a button for your needle book but i find it best to use a shank button like you the one i'm using here because it has a little space right here and these do have to be hand sewn on so just take a needle and thread and hand sew it on just like i did for this one and then it gives a little wiggle room between the button and the book to be able to loop the elastic through 
and you can see here I have it stitched right here and it doesn't come through the pocket. And that is how you make a needle book. The full tutorial for this project is linked in the description below. Please use the hashtag SingerSewing when you make this project and share it with your friends.